Hey, welcome to the Ultimate Blackout Kit Guide. Right, at the end of this video, I promise you will not see flashlights the same again. Right, you're going to have the know-how and skills to equip yourself and your team to handle any kind of nighttime ops. Right, so this guide is broken into three parts. Tools to help you see, tools to help you be seen, and things to make your life easier when it comes to charging and carrying these lights. Right, because if you strip away all the fancy product features, that's all there is to it, right? Lights to help you see and lights to help you be seen. So let's dive into step one, finding your ideal first flashlight, right? Tools to help you see, right? So almost everyone buying their first flashlight will buy based on numbers, right? They see how bright the light is and then how much it costs, right? So the higher the lumen, the cheaper the light, the better it is. Right, one of the craziest things I've seen floating around the internet was uh, lumens per cost ratio. So for every dollar, you get X amount of lumens. So the better the ratio, the better the light. No, right? That's not how you buy lights and that's how you waste money. So the right way is to first map the area you're working in, then map the task that you're going to do there. So here's what I mean. Whatever line of work you're in, you should roughly know the type of place you need to light up, right? And that will affect the beam pattern you need. So there are only three main patterns, a flood beam, a mixed beam, and a spot beam. Flood beams are for enclosed spaces, areas where you don't need to see far to get your work done. Indoor or office areas, uh, dense forests where trees are very close to each other, right? industrial plants where there's a lot of piping, walkways, and complex areas, uh, garage, workshops, uh, where there are a lot of tools and machinery, just a lot of clutter, right? Mixed beams, like these types, are good for large warehouses. Uh, you got your airport hangars, uh, city blocks, where you're going from tight to wide open spaces and then back to tight spaces again. So you need a good mix to help you see far and still have that good side view, right? So you don't get uh, caught off guard, right? Spot beams like these kind are for wide open landscapes, right? Tunnels, uh, caves, building perimeters, where you need to patrol, now let's say fencing, right? Big shipyards and airports where there's hardly any tight spaces, but a lot of ground to cover, right? And you have clear line of sight. So can you use a spot beam for tight spaces? You can, but it won't be efficient, right? You'll be distracted by this hotspot all the time. Can you use a flat beam for open landscapes? You can, but you won't be able to see past 50 meters and you can't spot dangers looking down a tunnel. So can you see how using the right beam for the right area is important now? It's all about managing distance and bringing the right tool for the job. Right, once you have a beam picked out, step two is mapping the task that you'll be doing. Right, this helps you define the features of the light that you should look out for. So there are four types of tasks. Are you searching, right? Doing in inspections, hitting a lot of places, right? Then you need a light with larger capacity batteries. Look for the MAH rating, right? The common ones are 650 MAH all the way up to 2300 MAH all the way up to 5000, right? These are the larger modern batteries. This is the number you're looking for, 5000 milliampere, right? The bigger the number, the longer the runtime. Right, milliampere does not affect brightness, it just affects runtime. Right, next is, are you navigating? Right, are you hiking, uh, trekking, leading an expedition? Right, then you need a light that lets you go hands-free. Something like this, the HC33 and HC65. Right, these are headlamps. They have double function lights that can go either hands-free or handheld. Right, you can put this here as well. Next, are you raiding in a law enforcement or military context where you need lights with specific types of controls? Right, instant. Uh, strobe, instant access, uh, quick draw holsters, instant activation, momentary activation, right? So you can signal, right? It sounds basic, but half the lights out there can't do any of the things I mentioned above. Here's a perfect example, right? right so this is the MH10, right? This is the P10iX. They both look exactly the same, have similar lumen outputs, but the main difference is the controls. The MH10 does not have a tail cap switch behind, the P10 has. So let's say signaling, right? How do I signal three long, three short with this MH10? I can't because the controls are in front. Right? So I have to turn it on, then cycle through the brightness to get what I want. Let go, sign, shine, off. And then to turn on, I gotta press again, off, on. Right, it's really difficult. And look at my grip, right? I have to hold it in an awkward way to reach the front. It's not one-handed control. Right, if the P10, all I gotta do is thumbs down, thumbs up, right? This is called momentary control. So this helps with signaling. And when you have a weapon, right? This also helps with this, right? I can do control everything one-handed. I don't have to put it down. Hang on, let me press the front, change the mode, then go back. 
So controls affect the way you work, right? So next is, are you tasking? So setting up cam, uh, construction, tear down, maintenance and repair type of work, then you need hands-free magnetic area type of lights like this, MT2A, then you got the ALS models here, all these are magnetic, right? The lights can be adjusted and directed, right? Right, these are lantern type lights with 360 degree visibility. Just thinking about those two things, where you need the light and what you'll be doing gives you a clear picture of the type of lights you need. Right, if I'm searching in a dense forest, I'll be going with floodlights with extra batteries for a long run time. Right, if I'm chasing down a criminal through city blocks, going through open car parks to indoor rooms to homes, I'll be on a medium beam with lights that have instant on or momentary, right? And with also one hand operation because I need my other hand to use a weapon or something similar. If I'm tasking in a workshop or garage, I'll be getting all kinds of area lights that can hang or stick or, you know, these kind of things right, to different places so myself or my team can work safely. So can you see how it works now? Three vastly different scenarios that use completely different lights for the best efficiency. So pro tip when choosing your first light in today's context, 2022 and 2023, go for lights that have a max constant brightness of at least 800 to 1000 lumens, right? That's bright enough for a lot of users. Battery type, go for the 21700 or 18650 batteries over the typical AA batteries or built-in battery lights, right? The power and flexibility you get from these uh, modern batteries will far exceed anything you get out of AA batteries. Okay, Unless, of course, you are travelling to places where you can't easily uh, recharge your drain batteries and you have easy access to AA batteries, then it makes sense. Like, go with AA. Otherwise, I always choose lights that can use the modern batteries first. Regarding controls, unless you're talking about hands-free area lighting, my preference will always be instant-on lights like this, right, with tactile button so you can easily find here and feel the controls even in the muddiest darkest conditions right so imagine you can't see your light you feel it oh there's my button i click it on i know it's on right we don't think about these things until we're in the situation and you realize oh yeah i should have bought a light with better controls so imagine mh10s right if it was pitch black i picked up this light i don't know where's the switch right? i have to find find the front switch i can't right Plus, if I'm wearing gloves, I'll be in trouble. Okay, designs that I'll avoid are zoom type lights like this one here. Right, so you can pull the front out. That This lets you change beam pattern on the fly. On the surface, they look clever, but these are inefficient and a hassle to use in real life because every time you use it, you have to adjust it, right? And the more moving parts on the light, the more chances for it to fail. Right, water will get in, uh, dust will get in, and it will get looser over time and start rattling. If you thought about the first two things, then now you have a light that works perfectly for your, your scenario. Right, instead of buying a light that tries to do everything but does nothing well. A bonus feature if you can, go for lights with dual springs. So what I mean is there is one spring in the tail cap here and another spring inside here. So you know when you drop the battery in, it bounces out. Look at that. So this means the battery is suspended between the two springs here and here. So lights without any springs in the front, if you drop or impact the light, the battery will start to break through the front circuit, damaging the light. So that's one of the biggest reasons why some lights just die as soon as you drop them, right? There's nothing stopping the weight of the battery from hitting, from damaging the important circuits in front. So that's all for pro tips. Now let's talk about the second part, tools to help you be seen. Right, the more you work in dark areas and especially in teams, you eventually need high visibility tools for you to be seen or you know mark out areas for others to see or work in. Real use cases would be road flares to warn oncoming traffic of accidents or in disaster scenarios to mark out designated areas with different colored lights to divert traffic and key personnel. Beacons to mark out drop-offs when camping at high altitudes, right? These have also been used to mark out landing zones for airlifted emergencies. For personal lighting, right? Easy examples would be to help you not get lost on night trails. So the trail leader and the trail sweeper can always see you along the path, right? On the other end of the spectrum, the commandos will use IR beacons on the back of their helmets. So when skydiving at night, they can see where their team is or landing zone is from the air. 
right, at job sites, these will stop heavy vehicles from running you over. Right, one of the highest causes of injury in construction is vehicular. Right, not being able to see a person working at night. Also, traffic stops, uh, highway accidents at night. If you can't be seen, accidents will happen, especially when heavy machinery is involved. Right, many guys rely on these uh, high visibility apparel, but they only work when a vehicle shines a light on them. If you're anywhere else and you have no light on you, you are basically invisible to the operator, especially in construction where machines operate in 360 degrees. And that's when something happens, right? Having a personal blinker or beacon attached to you will literally save your life. So the best personnel beacon so far right now is the night call NU06LE. Right, this checks all the boxes, very, very long runtime for many nights of use. USB-C charging, different types of mounts, uh, mole, magnetic, velcro, add a bungee cord setup like this and you can mount it anywhere. Four different colors, white, red, green, blue, and even red, blue, police blink. Right, the whole thing is waterproof. You can get multiple sets of these, leave them on your gear and you're set. The second part of being seen is area lighting to light up accident sites, dig sites, indoor rooms, crime scenes, uh, camping and more. Right, for these, you're going for lights with many mounting and standing options. Right? Magnetic hoops are especially important, preferably a flood beam with high lumens. Right? The ability to direct light is also important for up-close work, like these ARS flip lights. Right? These LR60 lanterns are also work lights, but they're not directional. Right? So if you're working something up close, Right, this is always be glaring in your eyes versus something like the this ALS flip lights. If you have it here, yeah, your eyes are protected and you can still light up whatever you're working on. Some even have tripod mounts like this ALS flat light here. So you can mount them up high to cover a huge area. So pro tip on work flat lights, always go for multiple lights instead of trying to get one mega powerful unit because if it crashes or dies and you're stuck, right, the more lights you have, the more flexibility and the more backups you have, okay? Also, a bonus if you have a portable power station, get lights that can charge and use at the same time, like this ALS unit here. So you can reduce downtime in case you forget to swap out and charge them during the day. Right, for work lights, many of them have a rubber finish instead of the anodized ones on tactical lights. Right, this doesn't mean they're inferior, it's intentional because work lights are going to get dropped, they're going to get knocked over, run over even. So they have to have especially high impact resistance from all around, right? And these coatings help them do that. Aluminum bodies will dent when dropped. Silicon polycarbonate will flex and absorb the shock, right? So that's the big difference there. The third and last part of lights to being seen are lights for directing flow. Right, basically marking boundaries to direct vehicles or human traffic. The three things you're looking for are ruggedness, right, because they're going to get run over, they're gonna get stepped on, they're gonna get thrown and kicked about. Right, second is deployment speed. How fast can you set them up and take down? Right, and last, ease of recharge. Right, ease of recharge is often overlooked because of price. Now this is a true story. An agency was looking to buy 300 beacons for their fleet of emergency vehicles. Right, they wanted the cheapest one, which used three AAA batteries in each beacon. So it fit their budget, but in real life testing, at the end of every shift, the store man had to unscrew one screw per beacon, replace or recharge three batteries, screw them back. Imagine that for 300 beacons every day. Right, that's insane. Right, the smarter option, of course, is to have rechargeable beacons like this with a series of charging bays. So at the end of the day, you can just stick it down, recharge, and you're done. Right, the more expensive, but this will save you hundreds of man hours on maintenance. Right, of course, they went with this option in the end. Right, now you know. Okay, so for beacons, these are the only two we consistently recommend and use. These are rubber wrapped. Right, can be dropped, can be thrown, they can be run over, and they float in water. Right, and they all have charging docks and multiple bling patterns. The only difference, the Gen 3 model has multiple colors and they can talk to each other. The Gen 2 model can't. So this drastically affects deployment speed. Right, so those are the two best beacons I recommend. Both have their pros and cons, so you can decide what's best. Right, can you use cheaper camping lanterns like this, uh, beacons and LA60 uh, to mark instead of using this one? Yes but they won't be as visible and they'll be crushed as soon as something runs over them, right? These kind, these kind of things. So it pays to get lights designed for a specific purpose rather than to try and buy something that, you know, does everything but does nothing well. Okay, remember that. Now the last part of the guide are 
things to make your life easier when it comes to charging and carrying these light. On charging, there are two options to go with chargers like the F21i and the UI1 chargers that you can take for travel. The second type of chargers are desk ones that go from two slots all the way to six slots. Right, these are great for teams or if you have multiple lights for different users. Pro tip, if you have a high capacity power bank like the MB20K, you can use them to power the USB chargers. Or even better, if you have a power station, you can set up an on-site charging station that's powered by the 100 watt solar panels. So don't be held back by fear of recharging this uh, modern capacity batteries. There are many solutions to managing power on or off-site, be it for a team of 3 or a team of 20. Next, we go into carry and waterproofing. Now, many lights will come with these three-way nylon holsters. So some lights will come with these uh, quick-draw belt holsters, right, for fast deployment. And they usually have an open base. Okay, so you can shoulder mount them, right, or just keep them on your belt and still have a hands-free light for admin work. If you don't need them, you can switch them around and see if they still fit. So just remember to get the bezel size right. right most lights have a 25mm bezel like this. Next, we go into carrying your spare batteries. One way I like are these smaller pouches that perfectly fit several uh, 21700 or 18650 batteries inside. Right, you can label them differently so you know which pouch has the drained batteries and which are ready to go. For waterproofing and weatherproofing, you can go with PVC cases like this. They have different sizes to fit your solo charger, your cables, your first aid kits. Or for more gear, you can move up to the 5 liter or 20 liter dry bags that can fit an entire power station for water crossing ops. Right, water and weather is often overlooked. Right, many will remember that, yeah, my light is waterproof. And then they forget about the batteries and chargers. Then things get ruined. So things like Ziploc bags are quick fix, but they are not a long term reliable solution for pro use. Right, I'll still recommend PVC cases or dry bags for electronics. The last part of this guide is on backup options. Right, these are small lights for off-duty and travel where you don't need a big light all the time and just want something small that you can attach to your keys or first aid kits. These also work as backups if your main light fails right, so you don't get caught in the dark. There are so, so many options out there. So my two best tips would be to go for AA lights if you're traveling like the MT2A or LA10. Right, AA batteries are easy to find all over the world and you don't have to bring a charger along for these. Right, just dispose the batteries and replace. The MT2A doubles as a self-defense tool and the LA10 is better for admin work, right, packaging with your standing and magnetic base like this. If you're going for the built-in battery types, there are so many as well, from floodlights to tiny beacons to UV lights. Right, there are also those with displays that tell you everything about your light. So take your time to find one that works for your daily use. Right, use the same principles. Map the area, map the task, and pick the backup light that works best for you. Right, that's it. I've taught you everything you need to know on how to equip yourself and your team to handle any kind of night ops. Right, I've shown you the tools to help you see, right, tools to help you be seen, and things to make your life easier when it comes to charging and carrying and waterproofing. So your next step will be to actually browse a curated collection of the best lights I've shown here in this guide from nightcalllights.com. You can use coupon code BLACKOUT20 to get $20 off your first order. But if you're still feeling lost, you can also join our Facebook group, link below, where myself or any of our resident experts will be able to help. Right, a word on Nightcore. Now you've seen me demo a lot of Nightcore lights in this video. Right, I don't work for Nightcore, they are not paying me to do any of this, but I do sell their lights because I believe in their vision and design innovation. Over the years, I've tried a lot of brands, but the ones that solve the most problems for myself and my customers are Nightcore. I've met the owners, I've visited their offices and factories, and they truly care about creating the best lights for the customers. They have hundreds of patents and a huge research and development team that constantly pushes the boundaries of what flashlights can do for you. So no matter what brand you choose, uh, the, the knowledge you get in this guide is universal. So don't get hung up on which country what lights are made in. If it works, it works. So stay safe and I look forward to sending you your very first lights. Alright, MJ signing out.